Hey, Crazy Will here today. Today we'll be talking about Aquara, smart home hub, and all its little magical accessories. That works with HomeKit, guys, so if you're into the smart home thing, stay tuned. Hey, Crazy Will from Crazy Will's Tech Show. Today, we're gonna be talking about the Aquara Hub and all the accessories that they sent me. So they reached out to me and they sent me the Aquara Zigbee Smart Home Security Kit. And it came with the hub, smart plug, double rocker smart switch, window or door sensor, a regular rocker, motion detector, temperature gauge, mini switch, water sensor, vibration and tilt sensor, and a cube. So let me break down some of these products for you. Unfortunately, I have them installed throughout my house, so I can't show you the physical product of all of them. I will show you some of them, but I will explain to you what I've been using them for in my house for the last two months, which was really awesome. I got to really play with their products and really see how it works. So the hub is the main piece, and it all works together with all these individual pieces, which is really, really cool. But the hub also works with HomeKit, which I know my followers are very big fans of that, and it works with Siri. Also also works with Echo and Alexa devices, works with Google Home. I got them working on both of them and they work pretty good for the most part. Good for turning on and off lights. Not really checking sensors yet, but I think that's coming later on. We have a temperature sensor and you can tell the temperature in the room. Another one I was really impressed with was the motion sensor. Obviously it picks up motion. Well, these all work together. They're pretty self-explanatory. The coolest thing I found was the water sensor. I really like that. I put that underneath my washing machine just in case I'm out of town or away. I can know if the water is leaking and I could send someone to my house. I've used a lot with the motion sensor and the vibration sensor I put on my safe and a window that I'm a little insecure about at my house. I put that sensor so that way it would open and close and I would know if somebody was breaking in. So the alarm feature is pretty cool. So this is the actual hub, the Aquara hub. And it's got a little sinking button at the bottom. This is actually a light up LED and it could actually be used as a night light. Just to give you guys an idea, I actually have it programmed to this little motion sensor. It'll either make it a Alarm if I arm it. Or it'll make it a night light at night. I have it going from 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock in the morning. It'll just turn on 20% brightness and you can pick the color you want. Anytime you pass this, it'll turn on for one minute and then turn off. So that way, if I want to go to the bathroom or grab a water, it'll light my way, which is pretty cool. It was a little complex to set up though. This was the confusing part. This is the cube. You can either shake it or you can turn it and you can make it do certain functions. It has a lot of functionality, guys. You just have to play with it. I'll show you in the app in a minute, but this, you know, you could do stupid things like shake it and it'll turn on the light or you could shake it and make the alarm go off or basically make it do anything you want. What was really cool was these switches. My kit came with a single switch and a double switch and I've actually used these turn on and off devices that were in my home kit. So you can backwards compatible some of this stuff. So I actually have this turning on my TP-Link light and I have this one turning on my TP-Link plug because through home kit, if if you guys saw that other video with Hoobs, I actually have a smart home connected to the TP-Link, which works with HomeKit, and it actually makes this work with it. It's very versatile, which I really like. I also use the mini switch actually as a doorbell, because I don't have a doorbell on my front door, and I really wanted a doorbell, so I stuck it right onto the front of my door there, and the hub actually rings, and you can program it. The hub has a lot of areas where you could program the ringer. You can either make it an alarm or you can make it an actual doorbell ring, which I did with that. So when somebody pushes it, it'll ring me. Another thing is you could also set up notifications. So when somebody pushes my doorbell, it sends me a notification no matter where I am. And you could do that with alarms, you could do that with window sensors, you could do that with any of the devices in here, it'll alert you, like I have it on my water sensor. So if something goes wrong, boom, I get an alert. Now these devices, like the sensor and the door sensor, and have a battery in them, and they say they'll last up to a year. And what I really like that Quora did was they actually made it easy enough to get these out. Even on the sticky ones that are stuck to the window, you can actually just click them off and the sticky part stays on, but the sensor part comes off, which I thought was really cool. And as you can see, this is the standard battery that it takes inside there. And that can be replaced, which is great because these are really inexpensive. I think this is only like 15 bucks, this little sensor. And it comes with an adapter that will you could mount on the wall or whatever. And it goes right back on like that, guys. Boom, it's done. All right. 
right, so at this point, I wanna show you guys the app. It's really massive, there's a lot to cover, but I'm gonna try and make it quick. I'm not gonna show you everything, I'm just gonna show you a little bit. So let's start that now. So here we are in my iPhone, and we're gonna click on the Aquaria Home application. It's gonna start up, and this is my home, where all the devices are, and this is a very big application, so I'm just gonna go through it real quick. Across the top here is just some of my accessories, and these are to enable and dis disable commands. At the bottom here are like the doorbell, if I don't want it to alert me and send me a notification. Oh, and you can turn the hallway light on right from here, and change the color, and make it brighter, which I'm not gonna play with that, because I have that set the way I want. It does that, and up here in the corner, if you click on the plus symbol, you can add an accessory, and if you click on an accessory, like let's say a water leak, it'll walk you through, you can identify it, and then click on it, and it tells you what to do and how to set it up. You hold down on it, and you go from there. The next one we're gonna go through is accessories, and you can actually click on your accessories, so the mini switch, and you can change the location, you can make the automation from here, and you can, that's the automation for the doorbell, you can click in that, and this is the automation, and this is what it'll do. So if it's pressed, it will send an alarm. So let's get back out of that. And then we have automations, which this is another area where you can actually make, like I said, the doorbell one. And this is what I had to do for the nightlight. You guys could see here, it says turn uh, nightlife timer off, nightlight timer on. So I had to make a timer, and then I had to turn the nightlight off, and then the nightlight on. It was a very time consuming. You have to play a lot, you know, so like, for example, if time of day is 8 o'clock in the morning, you would disable the nightlight. Um, so there'll be no nightlight on. And then timer on. If it's 2100 hours, that was another thing I didn't care for. It goes in military time. I enable the nightlight. Make it so it will turn on. Time on, off, and then nightlight on, off. So motion detection. It'll turn off after one minute. But this, these are all the different things. Same thing with the window. It sends a notification to me. So if the window is hit, pushes the alarm, and then and puts the volume up high, and it actually sends me a notification, which I really like. So then we have scenes, which I haven't really created any scenes because I do all that in HomeKit. And then my profile, which I don't want to show you because it gives my information away. But you can click on it, and it gives you a whole bunch of other stuff. So this is basically the app. And another cool thing that you could see, leak detected in laundry room. Well, that's not good. So as you you can see it gives alerts so I gotta find out what's going on in the laundry room so if you click on the leak it should show me information of water leaks so it says there's no leak but it just triggered it and this is all the different things okay so like what I want to show you is temperature right, right here and it'll actually give you the temperature this is the temperature in the bedroom and if you hold down on the different times of day you can see that I have the AC turned off and then turned on at night because we're not in the bedroom during the day so, so right now it's like 70 somewhat degrees in there and you could actually swipe this down like I said this is a it's a very intuitive app there's a lot in here and you can see that it almost gets to 80 degrees in my bedroom because we're not in there at the time and then it goes really low at night because the AC unit automatically turns on now another thing I wanted to show you outside of this app if you you go into HomeKit, like you see here, you could see you have those wireless switches. I was telling you that you can make a button press turn on basically anything that is HomeKit enabled. So I'm gonna show you that real quick. So if we click on the wireless one, and I already set this for the deck lights, it's a double switch. So I just want to show you guys, it turns the deck light on with one single press, it turns the deck lights off with two double press. And I could do that, these are not Aquaria products. These are just HomeKit devices. Well, they're not really. They're done through hoops. But any any HomeKit device, like the kitchen light, is actually a TP-Link light. That is actually linked through Hoobs Hub, which makes TP-Link a HomeKit-enabled device, which is making this probably more complicated than it needs to be. But we're going to add it, and I'm going to hit Next. And then I can tell it to turn on 100% brightness when that button is single-pressed. Now, if I do a double press, we're gonna go, we're gonna wait for that to, and so it added it there, and now we're gonna do a double press, and we're gonna go back to kitchen again, kitchen light, next, we'll turn it off, and then hit done. And now when I use that button, once it'll turn it on and when I double press it'll turn it off so that is a really cool thing if you want some light switches and you want to be able to do that it that's a really cool little nifty thing and as you could see throughout the home kit you can see all the different devices the save switches so you have a switch in there that I have to program eventually which I have nothing in there right now but it tells you the battery level it tells you the charge it gives you so much information right here you can see the temperature in the room so you see it works with home kit really, really pros and cons well. time guys pros it's an old 
all in one system, guys. It's a security system. It's a smart home system. It's all in one with a hub and everything. If you're looking for a solution for everything all at once and you don't want to buy individual products, this would be the way to go. A lot of accessories that are very affordable. I think most of these are anywhere from 10 to $20. The most expensive part is the hub and I believe it's around $60. And that's the most expensive part. It works with HomeKit, which is a big deal if you're an Apple user. It also works with your Echoes, so you can have Alexa do things for you. It also works with Google Home. So it's got a variety of ways to control these devices. It's got really nice security features. I gotta say, I really enjoyed the security part of this. You can get alerts knowing when somebody is opening up your window or opening your door. I may in the future buy some more sensors. I think they're only like $15 a piece. And so if you're looking for like a home security system, it's a really nice add-on. Another piece that I really enjoy was the water leak. I tested it several times and it's really neat. There's two connections at the bottom and if water makes them connect, they send a signal to the device. It alarm sounds, so you'd be in the middle of the night and the alarm will sound and wake you up and tell you, hey, there's a leak in your house or it'll send you a notification on your phone if you're on. Another thing that I really like, replaceable batteries. I love the fact that these are mobile devices and they're communicating with the hub and they're battery powered. It makes no wires, no mess, no craziness. You could just change out the battery. These batteries today are very inexpensive. Cons. All right, like every product, there are cons, guys. I hate to tell you this, there are things that are not that great, but I think they will be proved upon by this company. The app was a little cumbersome and hard to use. If you're a newbie, like someone like me, it was a little frustrating and I'm a tech guy and I found it a little rough to use. So it was trying to figure out how these devices work. The layman, I can't see them really getting into this and I think they're gonna make it better, but it was a little cumbersome and hard to use as you guys saw why I was demonstrating the app. It can be very frustrating to try and get these devices to do what you want them to do. Like setting up that nightlight, it was so many different steps that I had to do and so many different titles that I had to use to get it just to go with the motion sensor and have a nightlight. I think there should have been like a common one click in that aspect, you know, make, hey, make this sensor or go with the nightlight. And I kind of feel like it should have been built onto the hub with a sensor and it wasn't. I think that was like an afterthought of theirs. Pairing, and like I said, this is a new device. Pairing wasn't the easiest. Some of these devices, like the Cube, you actually have to take it apart and you have to get a little screwdriver right in there and pop it open and take out the battery and then put the battery back in and then hold down on the reset button that's actually underneath this plate. But like I said, it's the new devices. I'm sure they're working out the kinks with this. I'm just telling you my two cents. Alerts. If the app isn't open, it doesn't feel like, and I don't know if this is the iPhone's fault, I only used it on the iPhone, or if it's the actual company's fault. The alerts didn't seem like they pushed through. They would alert you, but it's, I think it's something with the iPhone where they don't really push the alerts. I don't know which one it is, but it's frustrating. I felt like if you had the app open, you would get the alerts quicker, opposed to if the app was closed. It's like, it's not pushing those alerts along. And I think that's more of an Apple thing than it is an actual product thing. But it's frustrating when I open up the app and then there's an alarm and I'm like, <sighs> that's a little too late. Another thing that kind of bothered me was my office was 100 feet away and it's using Zigbee and they don't really have a way to transmit that signal as far as the Wi-Fi. I tried to put a door sensor on my office door so that way it would wake me up if somebody went in my office. And unfortunately, the limit on this was around 100 feet. It's over 100 feet from where the device was put to my garage door. So that was a little frustrating. I'm hoping they'll come out with maybe a continuation of the system, like maybe a hub and then an extra hub for multiple rooms. So, you know, because 100 feet, 175 feet, I think they said, is not very far. If you have a large home, this might not be for you. So my overall thoughts, guys, I've been playing with this for a good two months, testing it, messing around with it, and it has gotten better as they've been progressing. I give it a four out of five. There's a lot of improvements that need to be made, but there's also a lot of great value in this product as well, especially if you're trying to get into the smart home thing. This is like an all-in-one setup, and you could buy it piece by piece. It's not like, hey, you gotta buy this whole kit. You don't have to buy the whole kit. If you just want the alarm part of it first, you could buy this and a couple of sensors and boom, you get yourself an alarm system and then you can get into the smart home and add plugs and go on from there. So overall, it's a pretty neat system. The great thing about all the smart home stuff is it's always improving, guys. So it might be a five star by the time you get it. That's it for me, guys. Make sure you like and subscribe if this helped you in any way. And remember, you can do anything if you put your mind to it. Later, guys. I'm always botching up names. Aquora. 
worry. These companies keep sending me free shit. I, I don't know what to tell them. <laughs> I'm always gonna be honest. You're still here? You haven't clicked on all these videos that I made? Or better yet, like button? Or even better, subscribe button? Just putting it out there.